following sermon was presented on Sunday, May 6, 2018, by Pastor Daniel Calcagno at Glad Tidings Church of God in Fawn Hill, Ontario. It is titled, To Be Continued. For more videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And visit our website at gladtidingschurchofgod.com. I can't do that either. Actually, no, I definitely can't do that. Now that I think of it, I can cut my sermon in half and say, well, can you come back next week? Um, the interesting thing is we're all into some kind of entertainment, usually TV, but there's all kinds of entertainment that has an ongoing nature to it. We're invested in, in the story, we're invested in what's going on, and we want to keep coming back whatever, however often it, uh, it happens, week after week, day after day, whatever it might be. But as he said, sometimes you're watching something and, and you're into something and you get to the end and then suddenly To Be Continued shows up and you're like, oh no, it's not going to be resolved in one sitting. You have to keep coming back and you have to keep watching more. And that happened to me. Who remembers the show Lost? Anybody watch that show? When that show was on, I was really into it. Don't, don't tell them how into it I was. I was, I was obsessed with it. I was talking to everybody about it. And uh, if, if you don't know the show, it's a show about a plane that crashes onto a, uh, an, an island, and there are survivors of the plane crash, and the show is about how they survive on the island and so on. It, it, it's uh, interesting because what would happen on the island would be a whole bunch of mysterious things. Lots of mysterious things would happen on the island, and the whole show was about not just how they survived, but the mysteries of what this island was all about. And, and what it all led to. So week after week and season after season, they would always end with a cliffhanger, would show up that, that lost logo that I just showed you, would show up at the end of every episode and be like, oh no, I have to keep, keep coming back to watch more. And, and who knows if they ever did answer all the questions, I don't know. But just a couple more nerdy examples for you because I'm a huge nerd. Uh, I also like to uh, read DC Comics uh, and, you know, for the past couple of years, there's been this overall story, uh, the mystery that's going on. And even though it's a bit of a pain, I have to drive to the falls every couple of weeks and, and get the newest issues I'm interested in. It's a bit of a pain, but they keep having me come back for more because it's to be continued, right? I, I want to find out the answers. I want to find out where it's headed. And one more example, we just went to see the latest Marvel movie, The Avengers Infinity War movie. And guess what? No spoilers except for this. That it ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> and guess what? The next movie doesn't come out the next year. <laughs> so we have to wait a whole year to find out what happens at the end of that movie. So to be continued, it's a reality of, of our entertainment life, or maybe you're into sports. Um, you know, there might be a team that you're into that you really get into and you really watch them every week or every, every time there's a game that's played, and they even make it to the playoffs, but they lose in the first round. <laughs> I've given up on the Leafs, by the way. I've told a couple of people about this. And I'm not watching them next year unless they make it to the second year. <sighs> but we are, are invested in certain things that have a continual nature to it, right? And I see a lot of analogies in the examples I just gave to what we do every Sunday here at, at church. Every Sunday morning, we meet and we gather together and we experience what we experience, we're going to get into that in just a moment, but then it continues. Guess what? It never ends, right? For me, every week I have to prepare the next Sunday's service. It never ends. It's always to be continued. So we have to analyze what we do as a church and what we do on a Sunday morning to make it worth it, to make it worth it, all the work that we put into it and all, all of you coming on a consistent basis. What are we doing as a church and how should we be doing it? So as I mentioned last week, the, the elders and I have been reading a book by Andy Stanley called Deep and Wide. It's how to make your church uh, the kind of church where unchurched people will love to attend your church. And that's why last week's message was called Church for the Unchurched. And we're going to kind of continue that this, this morning, just speaking about the nature of our Sunday morning service. What is it about our time that we, when we come together, that... All of you will be invested in what we're doing, and you say to yourself, maybe consciously or not, but you feel in your, in your heart that I can't miss next week. I want to be here next week, because there's so much going on that we want to be here. 
But there's something that he says in the, in the book that really stuck out with me, and I wonder if it stuck out with you, you too, Jerry and Elaine, that he said, when you do something, when you want something for people, people are much more prone to be engaged and to do what you're asking them to do if you communicate that you want something for them rather than you want something from them, right? If I'm up here, I'm saying, this is what I expect of all of you. If I keep on putting it on you, eventually you're gonna get tired of that. I would, I would get tired of that, right? So I wanna communicate that, that the Sunday morning experience, in addition to all the other things we're doing, is something for you. We're doing this for you. Elaine and I talked about that recently. The work we do as a church it's not for us, <laughs> it's for all of you. It's for all of us, right? I want the Sunday morning experience to be such where, where we come each week and we really feel like we can't miss each week's service because there's, there's things going on every Sunday that, that touch our hearts, that bless us, that motivate us, that help us to live this life. And that's what we're trying to do and that's our challenge as leadership, as a pastor and as leadership to how do we how do we change our our and, and adapt, if you will, our Sunday morning experience to be more relevant and to be more exciting? But you recall last week, as I mentioned, that we are trying to become a church for the unchurched. And what does that mean? Let's just unpack that. Remind ourselves again: being a church for the unchurched means that we are a congregation of disciples of Jesus. Firstly, right. We are the church. We are the ecclesia of Jesus. We are the assembly of Jesus, the church of God, if you will. And we want to be like him. We want to know him. We want to grow to, to more and more become like him, right? Now, the fact is, we are not doing this just for ourselves, as I've already been alluding to. We are becoming disciples of Jesus, yes, because we want to know him. We want to be, have salvation and have eternal life. But we have a mission as Christians. As believers, we have a mission to reach out to the rest of the world, to tell them about the truth of the gospel, to tell them about what it is that we believe in and what it is that, that we hope for, right? That's, that's the purpose for why we gather together, not just to build up ourselves, but to reach out to those outside of us. So that's why we want to you know, adapt our service, modify our service on Sunday mornings to be more relevant to everyone, but especially to unchurched people. Uh, what, what, will, what will get them excited? One thing that I'm doing or trying to do is when I preach my message, I should start having unchurched people in mind. If there was an unchurched person in this room, would, would they really understand everything I'm saying because of some of the terminology that I use or some of the concepts I'm presenting? I have to be more mindful of that. Maybe, maybe we take it for granted that everybody knows what I'm talking about when I speak. Right? I hope you understand what I'm saying, but I need to be more mindful of what it is I'm saying, and hopefully so I can explain it to others. But along those lines, we also, when we're having a mindset towards the unchurched people from the outside, we want to remind ourselves that we want to show them grace first. That we don't expect them to immediately conform to all the truth that we believe. We believe in truth. That's why the phrase is grace and truth. And remember, the phrase comes from John 1.17. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. God's grace and God's truth were realized in Jesus Christ. And so we embrace, like this, and this is why it was important that I shared this. As we embrace God ourselves as individuals, that, that God shows us grace before he expects us to embrace truth. Right? There's not a ton of time in between, but we have to understand that he does not expect us to be certain kinds of ways, certain kinds of people, before he show, shows his love to us. He shows his love to us immediately, right? Without any condition. It's unconditional. But then we must respond to the truth. But we do that because we know he loves us. I mean, because he has already shown his grace to us. So that is the approach we will take. With, with everyone, but especially unchurched people who come into our church. But the second part, the truth part, is important. Don't get me wrong. That's an important part of why we come together and what we want to do with people who come in. Challenge them in embracing the truth and conforming to the truth. So this is why Peter said, and this is our memory verse for this week, if you want to check that off back in your heart. This is the verse. Grow 
he instructs us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow in, firstly, the grace, and then the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's kind of the same thing, grace and truth. Grace and knowledge. Truth is, is knowledge, right? Knowledge of what is real, what, is, what actually exists. So, grow in that. That's our duty as believers, to grow in the grace and the truth and of the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it doesn't say all at once, right? Because if it was all at once, all of us would not be living up to what he expects. It's a gradual, over time, growing in grace, which means knowing that God loves us, not condemning ourselves, not condemning others, but growing in the grace, showing it to ourselves, and proclaiming it and showing it to others, and then growing in our knowledge of the truth. Now, again, what I, what I said was, it's not going to happen all at once. Nobody expects that. God doesn't, I don't, we don't expect anybody to, to immediately have all knowledge of grace and truth and, 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 and of everything there is to know about Jesus. So instead, as I put last week, every time we gather together is like an opportunity. It's a new opportunity, a fresh opportunity to grow in these areas. And how do we do that? Through teaching, through worship, through fellowship, through ministering to one another. We, in these different ways, we can do these every time we come together in some way. So whether it's our Sunday morning service, which we're talking about today, or whether it's our small groups, which we want to get into in the coming weeks and months, we have opportunities to grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, again, if we're focusing in on the Sunday morning service, which is what we're talking about today, what is the win of our service on Sunday? Do you remember what Seth Roth said when he was here? It comes from Andy Stanley. What is the win of our Sunday morning service? What do we mean by win? Well, what can we say would make our Sunday service a success? What do we believe would have to happen on a Sunday morning in order for us to say, yep, yeah, that was a success? <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but every time the service is over, I'm asking Sarah, what do you think went well? What do you think didn't go well? I'm wondering how well our time together goes and whether or not it was a success or not. But based upon what? How do we know whether or not our time together is a success? Well, let's explore that. What is the win of our Sunday morning service? Let's clarify the win. This is my opinion, so please don't, don't think that I'm dictating this is what it has to be. I think you'll see it's reasonable. But so let's, let's imagine that this is me getting the ball rolling when it comes to defining what is a successful Sunday, and then over time we will discuss that and make it even better. But here it is. I think that the win of our Sunday morning, it, it, this is what a Sunday morning would be if it, if, it, if it was a success, is a time each week in which we gather together and everyone is welcomed, appreciated, encouraged, and then challenged. Right? So let me unpack these. Let's look at these individually. Welcome. Firstly, now here's the thing. We all go through our busy lives. We all have things we're going through, difficulties that we're going through. Uh, who here is not going through some kind of difficulty right now? I don't expect to see anybody's hand up, right? We each have something that is that we're some kind of challenge or some something difficult that we're facing in our lives, right? So when we come to church on Sunday, when we gather together, we firstly want to be welcomed. We want to, in a sense, say, I'm not dealing with my life right now. I'm coming into a place where I feel welcomed and I feel like this is a place where I can let my guard down and just relax and be among people who love me and welcome me. And I have an example. When you go into a restaurant, who here has gone into a restaurant and nobody comes and meets you at the door or, or you know, in the front area? And you want to go in, you, that's why you came to the restaurant, you want to get a table, you want to get a menu, you want to order and eat food, but nobody was there. And you're sort of sitting, standing there thinking, hello, is anybody going to come and show me what to do, right? Yeah, I, I just remember Lisa probably. <laughs> There's plenty of people here who, who have restaurant experience and, and have the ability to, to, to understand that we want, when you walk into a restaurant, you want to be welcome, right? You want to be directed. Well, the same is true when you come into our church in our front entrance, right? When people come into our building, they want to be met there. They want to be greeted and welcomed. They want to be shown what to do. They want to know where the washrooms are. They want to know where the sanctuary is, so on and so forth, right? 
Who here has noticed that we now have greeters in the front entrance? Anybody notice that? Right? We're doing that on purpose because we, we're testing this out to see if we can give, give people a better experience as they come into the door. They're, 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 they're welcomed, they're greeted, and they're given direction on where to go and what to do. And so they're, they're, they're not confused as they come into our building. We have to remember, not everybody has, has been to our church before. So if they walk in and they don't know what to do, they're going to feel a little, little anxiety. We want to help alleviate that. But then along those lines, and, and, and guess what? <laughs> Paul said in his letters, to greet one another with a holy kiss. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, especially in today's culture, if that's going to fly. So we're not going to give people a kiss when they come in the door. But we are going to give them a, a welcome with, through a smile and through a handshake and through uh, you know, what we say. But we're not going to kiss each other. But that's okay. We'll take the sentiment. But then we want to make sure that everybody feels appreciated. Each person that comes through, this is so important. I want us to start thinking about this. Each person that comes through this, those doors is a gift from God. Do you believe that? Everybody that comes into the, into the doors of our church is a gift from God. We want to, and we want to express that to them. That God loves them, that we love them, we appreciate that they're here, and that, that we're, we're grateful that they, they made the choice to take the time to be here rather than somewhere else, and that they can, they can learn with us and sing with us and do all the things that we do on a Sunday morning. Now, Jesus said, here's the, the, the importance of showing appreciation. Jesus said that, he, for example, sparrows. Sparrows, God cares for the sparrows. And yet you are more valuable than many sparrows. What's his implication? Of course God takes care of you and appreciates you and loves you. If God takes care of sparrows or any kind of animal, he of course will take care of the pinnacle of his creation, us. We are made in his image. He loves us. And he wants to take care of us. And he wants to show his appreciation to us. He said, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. God knows you and he loves you. And, and he wants to know, wants you to know that he appreciates you have value and that we appreciate that you are here among us. So you see what we're doing so far? Every Sunday morning, we want people to feel welcome. We don't want people to come in and feel like, boy, nobody cares about me, right? Everybody to feel like they're cared for. They're welcome, they're appreciated, and then thirdly, encouraged. We want everyone to feel like they are encouraged. Like I said, we all go through our, our life's challenges and difficulties, so we need to be encouraged. Encouraged. We want to be given the motivation to continue on. Right? Does anybody has anybody ever felt like, boy, I just can't continue on? Right? You ever felt that way? I feel that way sometimes. I can't continue on. I want to give up. Can you pray for me and pray for, and, and I will pray for you and we pray for each other, that we are encouraged in our lives and that we take the time, especially when we see each other on a Sunday morning or, or uh, uh, at other times of the week, that we encourage one another to continue on. What we're doing is good. What God is doing in us is good and it's for a purpose and we need to keep going, right? So this is why Paul said, so I just put it there, we want to be encouraged to be given the motivation to continue on. And Paul said, this was his prayer for the Romans, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So joy and peace from God goes with believing. You see that there? It goes with believing. And what results is an abounding hope by the power of God, the Holy Spirit. Every time we gather together, I, I just, again, I want to reiterate the importance of praying for one another, the importance of verbally expressing encouragement to one another. Whatever it is you're going through, I encourage you, keep going. It's worth it. Don't give up on whatever it is you're facing in, in life. Don't give up. Keep going. If you're, if you're focused on your spouse or a family member or a friend who is not yet a believer, keep going. Don't give up. They're going to come to the Lord one day, right? Or if you're, if you're challenged with something in your family, somebody's going through a difficulty, and you want to give up, and it feels like you, you want to give up, don't. God is there with you. It seems like you won't be able to get through it. He will get you through it. So every Sunday, I want, I want to take the time to encourage you and for us to encourage one another. And if we do that, I can't imagine anybody not wanting to come to a place where, you've, where you are encouraged in that way, right? But finally... Our time together 
on Sundays, our time together is not a win. It's not a success unless we also challenge each other. If we're not challenged in some way, it's not a success. So yes, we extend plenty of grace to everyone, and that's how we, we can do that, by welcoming them, by appreciating them, by, by encouraging them. That's how we express grace to one another. We do all those things. But then we also express the truth to one another, right? We challenge each other with the truth. And so I want us to be growing, uh, uh, growing in, our, in, in the area of knowledge and in action. I think this, that's the best way to put it, to grow in our knowledge, what we believe, and in our action, what we do. If you are not growing in those, those are the two areas in which you should be growing. Like, you're not the same as you were last week, you're not the same as you were a year ago, you've seen yourself grow in some area of knowledge and some area of, of behavior, right? That makes sense to me, that every week I want to challenge you to grow in some area. So here are just some examples in growing in our knowledge of God. Who is God? <laughs> What's he like? What's his nature? What does he expect? What did he do in the past? What is he going to do in the future? I think if you don't know, if, if you know a little bit more about God than you did, let's say, last week or a year ago, whatever it might be, then you are growing in your knowledge in, in terms of what we should be focusing on. Same goes with Jesus, that you need to know who Jesus is. He is the way, the truth, and the life, right? Do you know that? Do you know that he is the way to God? He is the one we should be looking to, the one that we need to be emulating. If you're growing in your knowledge of Jesus, then you are growing in the right area. Same goes with the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? We talk about the kingdom. What is it? Is it just something that we experience in our hearts now? Or is it an actual thing that will happen when Jesus returns? Right? And, and how is that different from what other people believe? Well, maybe we need to work that out. We need to be growing in our knowledge of what that means. Right? Let's think about it in fresh ways. And, and you notice they put and so on, <laughs> because there's a lot more. But those are some of the more important ones, right? God, Jesus, the kingdom, and where we fit in in that, of course. But if you're only focused on knowledge, that's not, that's not enough, because, because knowledge is good. But what God cares about more is our action. So we must be growing in our actions, our behavior. So I put at the top of the list, our growing in our behavior of loving one another. Loving one another. What is love? And, 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 and how can we know what that is? And how can we apply that to each other as we as we uh, interact with one another? How do we express love? And I can do a whole, I have done, and I will do a whole message on what is love. We had a good discussion about this on Friday night. What is love? It, it, it's, it's knowing that it's virtue, virtuous actions expressed to one another. Being kind to one another, being honest with one another. You know, showing compassion to one another. These are the way we express love. And you have to analyze your relationship to see if that's happening. If you say you love your spouse, or your spouse loves you, but love, virtuous action is not happening, then you have to start asking yourself, what can I do? How can I be challenged to do more? What else did I say there? What about praying? What about studying? You know, we, you've probably heard a million times from, in church, you need to pray. You need to study the Bible. Who here has heard that before? And, and, and I'm sure some of you are growing in that. But I think there's a fresh way we can, we can approach these topics. I don't want to just say to you, you should be growing in prayer. You should be growing in studying the Bible. We know that. I don't have to say it again. So I want to find fresh ways to, to explain what that means and what that looks like. And fresh opportunities, perhaps in small groups or wherever it might be, where we can come together and understand what prayer is, understand what, what worship is, understand what studying the Bible is all about. These are areas where we have opportunities to grow. And I want to find those opportunities and, and give it to us. So you see those four areas. The four areas of welcoming one another, encourage, or welcoming, appreciating one another, encouraging one another, and then challenging one another. So I want us to be growing in these areas, and we need to evaluate our Sunday morning service to see if we are doing those things every time we meet. How did I put it here? Is our, this is the question I want us to ask. Is our Sunday morning experience such that everyone is welcomed, appreciated, encouraged, and challenged, and, this is important, each person feels like they can't, can't miss next Sunday's time together, right? How can we make it so that everyone does feel 
welcomed and appreciated and encouraged, and also a little challenged. So that every time we come together, you leave with a renewed sense of, of wanting to be a believer, wanting to be a part of what we're doing and, and, and how we gather together. Isn't that what we should be focused on for our Sunday morning experience? Would you appreciate that? Would you appreciate that if that's what we were focused on, that when you came, it was worth it? <laughs> like, it's worth coming to church on Sunday because I'll go this place or that place and I won't feel welcomed and I certainly won't feel appreciated. I'll feel discouraged most other places I'll go, right? You see the way the world is like or what we're facing in our lives? Well, not so when you come to church, when you're gathered together here at Loud Tidings. We want to encourage you and also challenge you because we want to see you better than you are. I want to be better than I am. That's why we need to be challenged as well. So, to be continued, what is that experience that we can have every Sunday that will get us to come back every week? What is it? We believe that there's more that we could be doing, and that's why we're going to focus on that in the next little bit. And we want to see new and more people come be a part of our church, and we have to find out ways of, of, of doing that, of, of making it such that they will want to come, right? And again, all this won't happen at once, so that's why we need to come back each week. It is to be continued, right? Every week we have a new experience that we can possibly have here at church together. So. Let's close our service. Let's have Sarah come. We're going to take the next, Just we have just a few minutes left this morning. And I want to take this opportunity to put into practice what I just, what I just uh, talked about. I hope when you came in the doors this morning that you were welcomed. Was everybody welcomed this morning? I think Nancy and Irene did a great job this morning welcoming everybody. <laughs> and they directed us to upstairs. And, by the way, if you don't know, if you haven't been to church in a while, we have coffee every week in the back area, the back meeting area. It's, it's for everyone. It's especially for any new people to make them feel welcome, but it's for everyone. I want you guys to know you can enjoy yourself before church and, and to fellowship with one another and to have coffee in the back area. And then hopefully through the service, in some way, I've encouraged you. And if not, I'm, I'm working on it. I want to show you that, that life is worth living, life with God is definitely worth living, and that we want to, uh, yeah, Offering? It's coming up. <laughs> it's an important time. So, yes, let me remind you that if you haven't yet filled out your connection card, to do that now, turn to the back of your connection card, take a look at the different areas there are to check off. Please let us know what it is that you want to commit yourself to this week, and please let us know what it is that you might be interested in in the coming weeks. But as we close our service, let's just take that opportunity one more time to apply grace and truth to ourselves through God's, through God doing that in our hearts. You know, I, I'm sure each of us has has um, experienced something this week where, where uh, we were maybe a little disappointed with ourselves, maybe a little disappointed with how we spoke to a person in such a way where we offended them or we, we uh, hurt them, right? We all go through times where we do things that we are ashamed of and we wish we hadn't done it. Guess what? Don't give yourself up. God loves you. The opportunity is before us to embrace Him, embrace His love and grace, and to, to know the truth and to make a choice to conform to it. That's how we apply grace and truth to ourselves. So let's all let's all close our eyes this morning. Let's just take that time to pray, to think about what it is that we are doing this morning.